In my video, How to Avoid Mistakes When Picking a Sink for Your Kitchen, Albert Sautner asks, Good information, Dave. What about the person that has to replace the sink in a hole that is already there? Well, Albert, we're going to get into that right now. Welcome back, Remodelites, to another episode of Quick Tip Tuesday, where I dive into your questions, comments, and concerns. I'm Dave with Remodel Media, and if you're new here, my mission in life is to eliminate regret, and I do that by bringing you the latest tips, tricks, and products for your home remodel. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click subscribe and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss an episode. And if you're not new here, you're going to notice that my background has changed. I'm actually at the Cajun RV Park in Biloxi, Mississippi, and I'm going to tell you guys a little more about that at the end of this video. Now, Albert, the, your question is as old as the kitchen sink itself, especially when it comes to undermount sinks. I'm going to focus in on those because those you have the hardest time with. A drop-in sink, as long as you get close, you're usually okay. But when it comes to an undermount sink, Here's a couple of key things to keep in mind. First is the outside dimension of your actual sink. The second is the inside dimension of your actual sink. The third thing to keep in mind is the actual cutout in the granite itself. And the final thing to keep in mind is material. Different materials are different thicknesses, so switching from, let's say, a cast iron to a stainless steel is not always that easy. So here's the things that you need to keep in mind so you can swap out your sink for the best possible alternate model. I'm assuming we're dealing with a rectangular shaped sink because if you're dealing with a very specialty sink with certain curves on the bowls and things like that, you're probably only going to be able to replace that exact sink with that exact sink from the same manufacturer or another manufacturer that has copied that exact same design. The short answer to your question, Albert, is there is no answer except to research, research, research. If you want a sink and you want to reuse the existing cutout, then you just need to find a sink that is, the measurements are as close as possible. When I say as close as possible, one of the things that I mean is the fact that it's okay if your counter hangs over into the sink a little bit or if it's pulled away back and you see some of that exposed edge. These are all correct ways to undermount a sink. So even though they'll have suggested dimensions on the spec sheet, plus or minus is usually okay a little bit, especially if we're dealing with stainless steel. Uh, cast iron is usually a little bit less forgiving because you do have unfinished edges. Composite granite or composite stone materials are also finished all the way through and all the way around, so they can be a little more forgiving as well. Albert, I hope that answers your question succinctly. The real answer to your question comes back down to research. So make sure you're paying attention to those dimensions, not just of the cutout, but of the old sink as well. If you can remove the old sink and take some measurements, great. If you have the old spec sheet from the original sink, even better. That way you can compare and contrast. But the key to it all is to remember that you have some variability in that edge detail, which I did cover in that original video. So if you need a refresher, go back and check that out too. So how did I end up in Biloxi, Mississippi? If you remember my last episode, you remember that I had bought an RV and I had bought a house in Stonega, Virginia, which is in Appalachia, and I would be heading out there this week to go check it out. Now, I had expected to already be in Mississippi as it is. I just landed in Mississippi last night. We've actually had a number of incidents with the RV. The person that sold it to us was unscrupulous and failed to mention several things that were wrong with it, uh, failed to disclose certain things. But I'm not letting that affect my mood on this trip because ultimately we are still together as a family. We are having a lot of fun. So tomorrow I'll actually be visiting the project house. If you're following me on Instagram or on TikTok, you'll be seeing some more frequent updates, but I'll continue to post here weekly as this project commences. And it's thunderstorming in Mississippi right now.
As always, thanks for watching. Go ahead and click here for more episodes. Go ahead and click here to subscribe. Share this with all your friends and leave a comment down below. If you have any questions for me at all, let me know what I can do to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.